of all of the major mental health illnesses, individuals with borderline personality disorders are probably the most stigmatized. And for this specific reason, I did some research and I gathered some of the most common myths and misconceptions for us to debunk today about BPD. Myth number one, BPD only affects women. In early research, researchers thought that women were disproportionately affected by BPD with a ratio of three to one to men. However, more recently, research has shown that the distribution is about equal for women and men who are affected by BPD. A part of the reason why this myth still pertains today is that there is a lack of research on BPD and men. One attempt at explaining the gender difference between men and women in BPD is that the research on BPD is typically conducted in a psychiatric setting and because women on average do tend to seek out help more than men, there is a lack of research therefore for men in this area. Psychotherapists and psychologists may also perceive problems with identity and impulsivity as more quote-unquote normal in men. Where destructive behavior in women may be perceived as a mood dysfunction, the same behavior in men is often perceived as antisocial personality. And unfortunately what happens to a lot of these men is that they're channeled through the criminal justice system and unfortunately elude a proper diagnosis forever. Myth number two, BPD is rare. In a sense, all mental health conditions are rare because they present atypical symptoms and levels of functioning. Most people don't have mental health conditions and most people who do have mental health conditions don't have BPD. Still, BPD affects millions of people throughout the world. And although the exact number of BPD diagnoses are difficult to gather, estimates believe that anywhere between two to 6% of the Canadian population is affected by BPD. This means that one to three in every 50 people will be diagnosed with BPD. Myth number three, BPD is not treatable. This is yet another dangerously incorrect myth. Although BPD is a challenging and complex condition, it doesn't mean that it's not treatable. Longitudinal studies, which I will link in the show notes down below, have shown that symptom remission is a common occurrence with those with BPD. And the symptom remission ranges anywhere from 33 to 99%. A systematic review conducted in 2016 showed that 85% of those diagnosed with BPD would have remission after 10 years, so from the moment they get diagnosed on. I know that 10 years seems like a long time, but personality disorders are objectively difficult to treat because they are complex. However, this does not mean that symptoms will be in full force during these 10 years. What this means is that there will be a gradual decline in symptoms until remission. Variables such as being diagnosed at an earlier age, a lack of sexual abuse, and a lack of family substance abuse are all predictive of a faster recovery rate. In addition, there are two key factors to making BPD treatment successful. The first is using an evidence-based treatment, so whether that be DBT, CBT, whichever kind of therapy, but it needs to be validated scientifically. And the second is starting younger. So evidently, the older that you start therapy, the more that these patterns are ingrained within you and the more difficult that they are to change. And I want to reiterate the fact that just because something is difficult to treat, it doesn't mean that it is untreatable and that treatment is useless. Myth number four, BPD is the same thing as bipolar disorder. Although the symptoms from BPD and bipolar may look somewhat similar, they are two very distinct disorders. The key difference between both is that bipolar is a mood disorder and borderline is a personality disorder. While mood disorders are characterized by serious changes in the mood, personality disorders are characterized by different ways of feeling, thinking, and acting from societal expectations. For those affected with bipolar, episodes of depression and mania represent radical departures in functioning that can last anywhere from days to weeks. In contrast, those with BPD's mood variation are often more transient, meaning that they last for hours rather than days and weeks, and are often more reactive to environmental stimuli. And although those with BPD may not always display prominent mood swings, they typically have a difficult time functioning internally. Myth number five, those with BPD are manipulative and attention seeking, and this is simply not true. Behaviors displayed by those with BPD are often viewed and labeled as being attention seeking and manipulative. However, this is not the case. 
The behavior is typically impulsive and merely a way for the person to try and meet their needs. For something to be considered manipulative, there needs to be an element of pre-planning, and often this is not the case for those with BPD, as they are acting on impulse as a reaction to very intense emotions. For example, someone might experience intense anxiety about being left alone, and as a response will beg the other person try to stop them from leaving. Those who suffer from BPD are genuinely suffering and do not choose to be this way. Unfortunately, a lot of people dismiss them as being merely destructive, violent, or aggressive. Please note that I'm not in any way suggesting that people with BPD shouldn't be held responsible for their behaviors because they absolutely should. However, it would also be wrong to say that these are mentally healthy people who are merely being selfish. Having this understanding will allow those with BPD to feel validated in the fact that they do have a condition and also will help to encourage them to seek the help that they need. Lastly, BPD traits do not manifest themselves identically to all those who are diagnosed. It's important not to overgeneralize the disorder to everyone who has it and to assume that they all experience all the symptoms to the most intense degree. If you want to find out more about what BPD is, I encourage you to go watch my previous videos that talk about the symptoms and specific diagnostic criteria for this disorder. And to make sure that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Tuna and I hope that you found today's information useful and I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What misconceptions about BPD have you heard? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another episode of On The Line. Bye!